How to Avoid Failure. That's this week on Think Tank Tuesday. Hi, I'm Paul Potratz, and welcome to this week's Think Tank Tuesday. Failure, I mean, think about it. Why do you fail? I mean, really, I want you to really kind of just sit back for a moment and say, why do I fail at things? Well, there's one reason why most people will fail when they actually fail. It's process. Boy, I just spit that one. That was crazy. But I mean, I got to really enunciate that one. It's all about process. Let me tell you real quick a story. So I've got a friend of mine, and he was at this dealership, and their fixed coverage, in other words, their absorption for service was around 62%. Their vehicle sales were around $800,000 a year. Well, he comes into this this dealership, not saying what dealer it is, but he comes into the dealership with those numbers that were pretty average, pretty mediocre. Well, the friend of mine, he's all about process. He's a process-driven type of guy. I mean, he's... I mean, his, his personality is process. I mean, he's obsessive compulsive, really, if you meet him, but he's a great guy, so it's not a negative. But he's all about following a process. He puts a process together, and he expects everybody to follow the process. And when somebody doesn't follow the process, he brings them in, and he talks to them, very calm. He doesn't beat them up or anything like that. He just says, hey, this is the process. This is what I've trained you to do. Training's key. And this is the process you must follow. Well, three years into it, his fixed coverage goes from 62% to 137% fixed coverage. So to explain fixed coverage for those of you guys that are watching the video that are not in automotive, we're talking about that his service department is generating enough revenue to cover the expenses for the entire dealership. So basically, he doesn't have to sell cars to turn a profit. He's turning profit in his service department, and it's all about process. This works in everything. I mean, whether you're creating a marketing strategy, whether you're doing a diet program, it doesn't make a difference. What is your process? You think about it. You want to start a business. You want to get into a business, and you don't even think about the strategy or the process of how you're going to be successful. You just have an interest in whatever your business is about, and you say, hey, I want to open up a business. Let's get my business cards. Let's get the building. Let's get the signage. Let's get a website. But you haven't thought about the process, process of how to get new customers, process of how, let's say you have a sales staff, how your sales staff is going to handle those prospective new customers, process of how you're going to do your bookkeeping. I mean, it's all of these elements that you have to have a process in place, but it's often forgotten. Recently, I just visited a dealership, and I go into the dealership, and they said, hey, we just hired a new service manager. And I'm like, okay, great. Where'd you get the service manager? Oh, we hired him from this other dealership. Oh, really? Did you steal him away? Oh, no, he got fired from the other dealership. And I say, okay, great. What kind of training are you going to do? What is your process to train this individual? Or are you just going to bring this individual in so he has the same bad habits and doesn't follow the process that you have at your dealership? And the dealer just kind of sat there and looked at me for a minute and said, yeah, I didn't really think about that. I'm like, well, how can you expect this individual to succeed if you're not going to train him in the process that you want to follow? And again, guys, Process is about everything. I mean, I'm going to use the word process like 300 times in this week's Think Tank because it's critically important. If you're handling, if you've got an internet department and you're handling internet leads, what is the process? Because you don't need a maverick. You don't need somebody that's going to come in and disrupt the process because when they disrupt the process, you will lose what you've tried to build. So again, process is important in everything you do. I know here at Potrat, we have processes for everything. So let me give you another scenario. Let's say that you fall down, you cut your head open, and you go into an emergency room. If everybody's running chaotic and they don't really know what they're doing because they don't have a set process, how comfortable would you feel? Not very comfortable at all. So in an emergency room, they have a process that everybody knows what they're supposed to do and when they're supposed to do it and how they're supposed to do it. And that's what's lacking in most businesses. So that's what I want to do is I want to challenge you this week 
to look at process for everything that happens in your business. The sales process of like when the leads come in through your website, the process when the phone rings, the process when someone comes into your door, what are all of those processes? And you've gotta make sure everybody knows the process. Because if you're a manager, I guarantee you, you're sitting there going, oh yeah, we've got a process, there's no doubt, we have a process. But if I was to poll your team members and say, hey, what's the process? If I was to poll them individually, I guarantee you if I polled 10 of them, there'd probably be at least five different processes that were laid out because not everybody's following the process. And when you build the process, you can't just build it and say, hey, my process is done, that's it. No more, I, you know, I'm not gonna go back and visit that. Because just about the time that you think everybody knows the process, they forget the process. So that's where it comes in to key performance indicators or checks and balances. What are you doing to make sure everybody's following your process? What kind of measurement tools do you have in place to make sure that they have process in place. When you fix process, your profits are gonna go up automatically. Your costs are gonna go down and your, your team members, that your employees will stay with you longer because an individual likes to come to work every day and know exactly what they gotta do. I mean, granted, there's a few people that are gonna be mavericks and wanna go their own way and everything else, but that's gonna disrupt the team as a whole. Everybody's gotta feel united. And the only way they can feel united is by you being a great leader and leading them and saying, this is our process, guys. And it's not to say that you're not open to hear about the process and how the process can be improved because about the time you have the process in place and you think it's it, it's proven you need to tweak it a little bit you need to make it a little better so again i ask you what is your process for everything can you write it down because that's what i want you to do is write down that process step by step by step i want you to double check it triple check it and then i want you to start polling everybody at your business and see if they know what the process is and when you find out and when that light goes on and you're going, wow, they don't really know the process, you need to train. And you've got to train that process day in and day out. I mean, you've got to do it weekly to make sure that they know that process and you've got to spot check it at least every few weeks. So again, I ask you, what's your process? And I hope I helped you this week. Be sure and check us out. We've got a lot of conferences coming up. We're gonna be all over the country. I mean, all through the United States and even out of the country over the next few months, so I hope to see you soon. That's this week's Think Tank Tuesday, thanks.